So, uh, just to start off, the question that comes usually when we say you should use social media is, oh, okay, which one? Or they say all of them. They want to be on all of the platforms. They, okay, I need Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. Now, what we say, basically, drawn a little bit back to our philosophy, is like, no, depending on who you're trying to serve, who you're trying to talk to, first of all, find out that. And then you need to see which platforms they use. And then finally, which we're going to talk about now, each platform has its own world. Mm-hmm. It's a different kind of conversation and a different way of approaching it. So, yeah, in, in our previous, uh, well, another webinar that we've done, um, we mentioned about how it's important to segment down your customers uh, so, so to know where they are uh, and break them down into their different ages, locations. Uh, so depending on who your customers are depends on which particular platform you would use. Um, so we're going to break them down, tell you a little bit about each one and what kind of people uh, you'd want to attract on each one. Yeah, uh, I guess we just start with A, um, Instagram. One of my favorite ones, mm-hmm. um, basically what we say, regardless of if you are a business or a personality, uh, want to be on that platform, it is, it is a visual platform. Um, as much as there are captions and copies and stuff like that, it is visually based. Um, it is a place that people take other piece of content, which is called curated content, and they share it on Instagram in a different format and make it more visually pleasing. Uh, what we see usually, I think you're going to go into it, but you, usually you see a tweet that's from Twitter on Instagram with a bit of a funny uh, context to it. Besides that, Instagram is so big now that it is also a platform of social proof. Basically, how you come across visually on social media, if you're, especially if you're a restaurant or anything with food, something that um, is something that for customers they want is basically the visual uh, element of it being pleased yeah yeah sense. basically if you have a a product and you're a product focused business um you want to be able to put like your products in the best light on instagram um so you don't you want to you know think about uh, how it's going to look positioning of your product within your photos um and showing that it actually shows um you know the benefits of what your product uh, both design-wise and functionality. Mm-hmm. Um, you have the use of videos, Instagram, uh, Instagram pictures, Instagram stories, to have a little bit more of that kind of uh, conversational and a little bit more kind of freedom and, and less... Um, corporate. Yeah, yeah, less corporate and less, uh, less like very focused specifically on design. Obviously, on your feed photos, you want to have, uh, you know, very high quality stuff. But on that stories side, you can have a little bit more of a, a relaxed and conversational view. Um, One thing extra... Um, there's a lot of things in Instagram and there could be a whole webinar for itself. But what we usually tend to say is, is a mix. You do have the visual pleasing, a very professional maybe feed. However, these days people are expecting some kind of raw behind the scenes kind of um, element to your platform. So if you have a pillar system within uh, Instagram, basically having a highlight saying behind the scenes or our team or this is how it's made, like cooking tips or whatever. Those kind of things that's going to be shared in your stories are very much more of a pleasing uh, element to it. Yeah, we'll go into the strategy a little bit uh, in a sec. But um, yeah, it's very important to have like, you know, kind of like a content pillar system, uh, especially on Instagram, um, because the platform itself within the stories section and within highlights uh, really does cater towards that. So it'd be a very, uh, you know, shame if you didn't use that to your own advantage. Um, then you also have Twitter. Uh, so Twitter is a little bit more conversational. It's only text. It's the, literally the complete opposite of Instagram. Um, so there are in, uh, images and, and videos on Twitter, but uh, what works well there is you know, text-based uh, content. Uh, so it's very conversational. It's not very much of a formal tone. Um, but the thing is, is everyone is there. Every brand, every major celebrity, every person. Um, you know, it doesn't have as much... Um, daily monthly users um as some of the other platforms like instagram and facebook but the people that are on there are dedicated people um it also is very much easy to be reactive in in a very different sense than instagram um in the sense that if a trending topic is happening um twitter is where it will break first is where those conversations will happen um and it is where those conversations will be much more vibrant um based on their trending systems they have a trending page uh and those are kind of tailored to the audience uh, and to the customer that's, that's reading those things. Um, 
they will be able to get tailored trending topics. And if you can jump in on those conversations, uh, you can have a very high uh, chance of reaching those people and having a little bit of that viral, viral aspect. Uh, so there's that virability aspect, um, uh, an opportunity that you can take advantage of. Uh, just like Instagram, uh, Twitter is a great way to have that social proof um, because you can have a thing called a pinned tweet. Uh, so this will be the first thing they see when they go to your pla uh, your profile uh, and you can kind of sum up all of the key things uh, about what is best within your company. Um, so it's a great way for anyone that does see you in that kind of uh, reactive trending topics, they can click through, see what you're about and instantly know um, what it is you do, what's your USP and how you help your customers. Um, so that's a really good thing about Twitter. For sure. Um... Another one, it is Facebook. Um, it's funny with Facebook because everyone think it is it's too old and people find it irrelevant when we when we talk to someone. Uh, some, um, however, one thing that is very important to know is that Facebook is the core um, driver within social media. Um, not just because people are on social media uh, on Facebook. Basically, the Facebook system the way it interacts with Instagram and every other social media platform is key. Uh, so it's very information driven. Usually the profiles a company have on Facebook is basically just to prove that we are real. Uh, we know what we talk about and you can, you know, you can share us with the relevant people. Um, besides that, I think I need to be careful of saying that Facebook is not being used anymore. It is, it is still being used and you share blogs and more text driven um, sort of uh, content. However, with video content on Facebook, it's still working. Um, mm -hmm. Facebook Live is just as important as Instagram Live. And, and right now, actually, I don't know by the time this is out, um, they're trying to merge it. So basically that you can live stream on Instagram and Facebook at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's a new feature that they're coming up with. Um, yeah, yeah. And it's also I think another thing about Facebook is the level of the amount of uh, different applications that are within the system. If you're a business profile and you have a business page on Facebook, you can have you can integrate your own shop inside of it, just like you can with Instagram now. Uh, they've recently added, but um, on Facebook you can create a shop within if you have your products and they can buy straight from Facebook without ever having to leave, um, you know, their phone um, and leave the platform. There's also um, kind of aspects within that um, to have a forum system in there. Um, you can have ratings and Facebook ratings matter just as much as Google ratings or tech advisor or TechCrunch uh, or Trustpilot or any of these things. Um, so, you know, your Facebook rating system, all of these things are very important. It's the, it's the kind of that core platform for social proof because if you don't have a Facebook page uh, in 2020, yeah. it's kind of like you don't have a business. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it, it is a, it's a, it's a golden opportunity to share the story. Yeah. Um, use the about section in a, in a creative way and share if you have a video of your company, put it in there because people are going to look as a sort of a checkup before they purchase anything. And just really quick, I forgot to mention that Facebook has a section, business manager section, which is super key. And we're going to go into it later, but um, yeah, just a quick note in. Um, one that kind of gets a little bit undervalued is Pinterest. So Pinterest is very useful if you have um, either a product side is very useful because you can just like Instagram is very visual and you can show off um, you know your products and you can kind of make lists and like kind of for example let's say you work in uh, you have a a product that works well within indoor decorating um, so maybe you have you know a poster uh, or you have um, some, something that would go in the house you can set it up uh, you know, images of your product within household kind of um, indoor decorating, indoor design um, folders and, and, and what are called pins. Um, you can put those in there and then anyone that's searching uh, for those things will see your product in those spaces surrounded by other products that they know they like and the algorithm will work, allow them to be able to pin that and then click through straight to your kind of e-commerce platform or your other social platforms uh, in order to get a sale. Um, so Pinterest is very useful. It's very searchable. Um, it, the kind of base, base of it around is about people searching for something and then loads of things come up. Um, 
but that doesn't mean it's only for products. It's also very, very useful um, for B2B platforms as well. Um, a lot of people search through Pinterest for a particular topic um, and then lots of different kind of infographics come up a lot on the B2B side of Pinterest. Um, and then you can click through and that will take you through to a blog post. And then in that blog post, you can then kind of gain a customer's or a reader's trust, which can then eventually lead them to another part of your website where you can you know, make them a customer or a client. Um, so don't underestimate the kind of SEO ability, the searchable ability of Pinterest. And speaking of trust, uh, LinkedIn as a next platform, it is it's a trust machine. Basically, within business to business or business to um, B2B or B2C, you have LinkedIn as a sort of core platform to come across as an expert. Um, this is where you put out information or any kind of blog or any kind of um, data that you have that is related to your industry and you put it out and you share it as either value to the customers or just as a milestone that you've achieved and um, within your company. So LinkedIn is a golden opportunity to come across as an expert and Besides that, you can also target really well with LinkedIn. So if you're a business to business and you want to get in hold or in contact with the directors of a certain industry, mm -hmm. um, you can specifically target those people through LinkedIn and come across um, in the right way. And when I say in the right way, you can send as many, as many uh, emails and uh, text messages and however you get in contact with them, but they will end up checking your profile. So that's why it's important to be having an active LinkedIn profile because a lot of people, personalities, companies just have a profile, but they don't use it actively. And what the industry is saying is that LinkedIn is now how Facebook was in 2009. 14, 14. I'd say back 2014, yeah. 2012. To be honest, yes, because it is now where people are starting to also post uh, videos of themselves as a blog and being much more transparent. So that's a golden opportunity, I, I think, um, for businesses, any kind of business to take on that platform. Yeah. Uh, then don't forget to not underestimate on top of that. Obviously, you have those key things, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn. Um, but then you have new platforms that come up. Um, TikTok now is probably not as new as, as most people think. Um, you know, it's kind of taken the world by storm. Um, and it's now, you know, it's got over 500 million uh, monthly users. It, it's probably one of the maybe third or fourth uh, most popular social network. But, you know, six months ago, a year ago, most people didn't know about it. Or if they did, they thought it was that thing for kids. But a lot of brands and a lot of companies are doing really well uh, creating, you know, kind of dedicated and specialized content for TikTok. Um, so when a new uh, thing like TikTok comes up, think about how you can be the, use that first mover advantage um, to kind of set yourself and be known as one of those brands on that platform. Because there are companies like the Washington Post, the New York Times, um, that have really celebrated and really used TikTok to their advantage. And they're now known as the brands of TikTok, just like Wendy's is the brand of Twitter. Um, and you know, you've got other uh, companies like Maersk, which are known as like kind of the brand, one of the brands of Facebook. Um, so it's, it's about you know, getting that first mover advantage. With TikTok specifically, um, it's a lot more creative. It has a much more younger audience. Um, now that doesn't mean that it's all teenagers or 12 year olds. Uh, the actual average age on TikTok is around 18 to 24. Um, so, you know, it's that young, young, young millennial, late uh, Gen Z, yeah, very young spirited. Uh, and as I said, they're very creative. So it's not about going on there and selling. People don't like people that go on a place like TikTok. It's a lot like Reddit, where um, if you go there and just try to sell and, and just try to who you are and say, this is my product, buy it, you will, you will not do very well. Um, but if you can incorporate creativity and incorporate the kind of like TikTok um, vibe and the TikTok zeitgeist within that, you have a really high chance of going viral as well. There's that high virability aspect. Um, you can jump on TikTok, uh, unlike any of the other platforms, you can jump on TikTok and in you know, a week, a month, uh, you know, a couple of months, uh, really gain traction organically. A lot of the other platforms you need to spend money in order to grow um, quite quickly. Um, TikTok, you can grow really quickly without spending any money at all. Um, yeah, so thank you. That's uh, been a very brief uh, overview of social media. Um, and the main things that we think you should know. Um, 
obviously we run a social media company. So if you have any questions, um, then feel free to let us know um, wherever is available on this particular platform that you're watching this on. Um, and we'll get back to you. Um, uh, other than that, thank you for listening. Have a lovely rest of your day. Um, and yeah, Sarah and Ara. <laughs>